Hey, hey, art friends, it's Sherilyn with the Painted Cicada, and welcome to Together, uh, which is the super cute bird heart painting, which is part of the uh, Heart Art Challenge free event in the online paint night group. Let me just take a moment and make sure I am live in all the right places. So bear with me. just want to make sure I get a link to this in the actual event so that people can find it if they get confused. Okay, I think I'm everywhere that I need to be. Hello, how are you? Um, I will mention um, I always forget to say this in the beginning. I am going live using uh, StreamYard. So if you have not done so yet, if you could click on this link below, open in a new window, um, and just give StreamYard permission on Facebook. It's just like a weird um, technical thing. Um, but it helps us see your name. Um, and you only need to do that if you're on Facebook. Um, but anyway, whew, let me take a deep breath and then we will get started. Hi, Christy. I see everybody's hopping on. All right. Let me turn that goofy banner off. Uh, welcome, welcome. I hope everybody's week is going well. Um, I can't believe it's only Tuesday. It's been kind of a whirlwind over at my house, but that's because I've got teenagers and they've got stuff to do here, there, and everywhere all hours of the day. Um, anyway, so uh, let's talk about the lesson for this evening. So here's, um, actually it's just a printed copy of our sample that we're doing this evening. And the beautiful thing about this is you really can change just about everything and it still will turn out super cute. Um, it's really easy to draw. So I'll go over that with you, um, step by step. And, uh, the color list I included in the group, but again, totally optional. Use what you have, use what you love. Feel free to change the colors. Um, I've actually painted this one several times. This is a social artworking design. Um, and I've done several in-person um, paint parties with it. And I always change up the colors and it always turns out really nice. Um, but this evening um, I listed magenta for the birds. I've got kind of this fluorescent color as well. Uh, blue for the background. White and black I use in almost everything. And then I'm gonna do the viney heart with a light and dark brown. Um, but certainly you could do, I'll show you. I've got this sample here. This is another version um, using reds for the bird and the bow and green for the vines. So definitely you can change this. Don't be afraid to take some risks. Um, change it up, match it to your spring decor, your living room, wherever you're going to put it, it will turn out cute. No matter what colors you use. All right. So let me get my goofy face off the screen. We'll zoom in a little bit here and let's get started. So I've kind of sketched a little bit, um, but I'm gonna draw this with the Sharpie. You can draw this with a pencil if you don't wanna see your lines. Um, but basically what I'm gonna do here is kind of sketch in a heart where the edges overlap. 
So this is going to be the basic shape of my wreath. And of course, um, my heart here is a little lopsided. So when I add my vines later, I can kind of even that out. I'm going to add a bow on top. I do that by just making two fun loops. And then we'll have the bow strings. And then the shape of the bird, let's walk through that, is fairly easy, okay? So I want my bird kind of sitting on these vines. So I'm going to draw an upside down teardrop shape. Or, you know, you can think of it as kind of a big leaf shape. So just that rounded at the top teardrop shape. You can see the one on the right is a little bigger than the one on the left. That's fine. So these birds are just kind of these leafy teardrop shapes. And then of course they need a beak. And then we have to give our birds a belly. So I kind of want big fat chubby winter birds. So I just make a half circle. Right underneath, that's their big puffy belly. And then our birds need a tail. So right here, kind of at the base of this teardrop shape, I'm just gonna draw two lines. And then I loop them to connect at the bottom. So that's where the feathers would be. So again, over here, two lines. My top line is a little longer. And then I just make some loops to connect and that's the tail. And I'm not really gonna draw feet because it's gonna be implied that they're sitting on these vines and so the vines will come closer to their bodies. But that's the general shape. It's super easy to draw. It's basically just a heart overlapping on both ends. Now I do this with a Sharpie so I can see through some of my uh, background layer as I paint. You could always use pencil, um, whatever works for you. I like to use the Sharpie so I know it shows up on camera. And usually with acrylic paint, most of it gets hidden anyways. All right, so let's start our background. And if you um, are a little unsure about the, the drawing, um, I'm gonna do it again with paint. You know, I'm gonna walk through it again with the paint. So don't worry too much about that. Um, for the background, I'm gonna use kind of a mix of white and blue. I'm gonna need more white than I have blue. Uh, don't be afraid to shake up the color blue. Um, teal is a beautiful color to use for the background. Minty um, blue is also a nice color. So whatever you're feeling. I've got um, some paint here that I've got left over and so I'm just going to play with this because I want to empty out these bottles. Actually, those are about the same color, so that was silly. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I've got a nice uh, medium to large size paintbrush. I'm working on a 12 by 12, but this could certainly be done any size. I should have mentioned that when we got started. Um, but choose a nice large paintbrush for whichever size palette you're using or, or um, canvas you're using. And what I'm gonna do is take some of this pure blue and we're going to do our edges. If you've got a raised canvas, like I've got a um, stretch canvas, I'm going to go ahead and paint my edges just so I don't have to worry about coming back to that later.
I really like using square canvases. I don't know. I always tend to prefer square. I'm working on a 12 by 12, but you could certainly do this um, on any size. Just, you know, since we're drawing it, just fit it to whatever size you're working. So if you're working on a 16 by 20, just go big. Um, if you're working in an art journal or on a paper or a smaller canvas, just draw it a little smaller. All right. Oops, I just wiped blue paint on my nose. That should be funny. Okay. So get your edges nice and blue. And I'm going to come around here and add some more paint so it's nice and wet around the edges. And then what we want to do is kind of blend this blue inward. So I'm just going to stretch this blue as far as it'll go. Then I'm going to dip my brush right in the white paint and I'm going to start adding paint and blending this blue towards the middle. So blue on the edges and then we're going to start adding white and blending inward. And just have fun with this stuff. There's no right or wrong. Um, like we want a blue background, right? So it could be light blue, it could be dark blue, it can be any kind of blue you want. And if you go too light, just add more blue paint. If you go too dark, just add more white. There is no right or wrong. I like to kind of have a gradient. Again, that's, you know, a matter of preference. Um, I've done this a few different times and sometimes I just put the blue on there and kind of mismatch it around and that looks nice. And sometimes I have a gradient where it's lighter on the inside and darker on the outside, which is what I'm doing this evening. And that looks nice as well, but it's really just, totally up to you. This is your playground here. Your canvas is your playground. So if you need to, like I've got some canvas showing through, you probably can't see that on the canvas um, on the camera but I can see it here in person. So I'm just blending a little more paint on here. I'm working in a circular motion. Just blending that color around. I chose blue and white again as you're working if you feel like you need to add a little pop of color here or there. Go for it. Hi, Sue. Glad you could hop on. We're just painting some birds tonight. I actually did birds a little earlier today. Well, a bird. Um, as I'm trying to catch up with this heart art challenge for the um, everyday prompts and I'm not doing real good with that. And I really don't have an excuse because, um, because I'm an artist for a living, right? Like I sit down and paint every day. So uh, I, I don't have an excuse other than uh, sometimes I just get distracted. Anyway, so today I was painting a bird um, and he turned into my little nemesis. 
I just could not get him right and I kept tweaking and adjusting and he was just fighting with me the whole way. So hopefully these birds this evening will be a little more forgiving. <laughs> So again, if you are just joining, um, we are painting um, a, a painting called Together, which is birds on a heart-shaped divine. Um, this is a super easy painting, but it's really cute. It's great for spring. Um, and so what I did to get this background was I just mixed some, uh, I used blue and white and I did my edges in the pure blue and I kind of blended it inward uh, using more white towards the center. So that is where we are. Hi, Melody. Louise, thank you for answering that question about the canvas size. Yes, this is, I'm working 12 by 12, but you can work on any size. Um, and this is super fun and easy to do. And what I love about this is you know, I mentioned this as we're getting started with the colors, that you really can tweak the colors, but you can also change the design as well. So, um, you know, if you paint a heart wreath tonight, you could always paint a round wreath uh, down the road or like tonight I'm just using brown for the vines. You could use green for the vines another time or you could change the leaf shape. Um, you can really change this up a variety of ways. And if you do birds this time, maybe you could do, I don't know, something else another time, a gnome or um, what else is popular, crow or I don't know, whatever's trendy at the moment. Um, and it turns out really cute. All right, so we've got this background. I've chattered enough that most of this, um, I'm using craft paint so it dries fairly quickly. Now, if you're using a, a heavier body paint, um, let's see, like an artist's paint, you know, that comes in these tubes, they do dry a little bit slower and that's okay. Um, just know that some of your colors might blend a little bit. If you've got a heat gun or a hair dryer, that's helpful. I don't need to use that tonight because I'm using this craft paint, but the next step here is we're going to go right into these vines. And so I've got two colors of brown. I've got um, an espresso color and honey brown. If you only have one color of brown, you can always add a little white to make it lighter. You can add a little black to make it darker. Whatever, whatever. Um, and then I do want to thin this just ever so slightly. So I'm going to add a little bit of, this is just acrylic ink, so that I'll thin down that brown a little bit. So add a little, if you've got thick paint, add a little water. Um, when you're working with vines, it's just Anything where you need a long, thin line, wet paint is helpful. You don't want thick, gloppy paint. So, just something to keep in mind. Now for this, um, there are a few different, you can do this with a few different size brushes. So, if you've got a thin brush like this, this is called a liner brush. Um, this is a number one liner brush. The sizes aren't consistent between brands, so I hesitate giving sizes. Um, but you can use that or you can use a round. I think I'm just going to go with a round this evening. Um, the thing to remember is if you're using a round brush, just make sure that you're using really, really light pressure. So I'm, I've thinned it down this paint enough that it's almost like melted ice cream. If you, um, I just got a notification. Sorry about that. Okay. If you um, have ever followed painting with Luba, she's one of my friends and she suggested that description melted ice cream so that's kind of the consistency you're going for anytime you want to make thin lines and so i'm going to get some of this deep brown 
And again, this is where we're drawing our heart shape. So you can be kind of flexible with it. And what I'm going to do is hold my paintbrush up here at the top. And what that's going to do is give me a wavier line. Um, it's going to be, hi, Michelle. I'm so glad you're here. How are you? Um, it's it's going to be easier to be a little freer with it. So I'm just going to get in and I'm going to, you know, I'm, I'm kind of making a heart shape. Keeping in mind that these are vines. So as you can see, I'm not making straight, perfectly pretty lines. I'm kind of going a little wavy. And then I'm going to come back here and do the same thing. And it doesn't have to be the exact same shape. I just need to make sure I'm kind of keeping in with my heart shape here. So easy, easy, easy. And what I'm going to do is alternate between this light brown and dark brown. I want to make sure this light brown is nice and thin actually a little thicker paint here. And so I'm just going to come through and make more vines. And the vines, the thickness can vary. They can cross and overlap. And don't worry about perfection because we're adding a few vines on each side. So it's not going to be real noticeable. I'm running out of paint a lot easier with this color and that means it's probably a lot thicker. And so I'm just going to add a smidge more water. Oh, you don't have to apologize. I'm Christy. I'm so glad that you hopped on tonight and the replay will be up in the group in guide nine. And then I always keep everything I do on YouTube as well. So if you feel like painting this a little bit later, that is absolutely fine. I appreciate you hopping on to say hello. It's always nice to see you. So I've got two vines here. I'm going to come in for vine number three. So I've got three vines. I'm going to go in for one more. Vines. I'm going to come back through 
um, in a little while and I'm going to add uh, kind of some buds and leaves on this. So right now I'm going to give that a break and I'm going to move on to adding some color to my birds. So I was using a flat, a small, I'm sorry, a round, a small round. I'm going to move just to a larger round. Um, so that's, there we go. I don't think I cleaned that one out very good. So I am going to add some color to my birds and I've got two different kinds of pink here. I've got a deco art dragon fruit and then I've got this, um, this is a master's touch neon magenta. And I just choose colors for this evening that, you know, basically I've, it's time I used and got rid of. So um, I'm gonna add a layer of magenta. Now, if you're just now drawing your birds, the shape that we're gonna start with is an upside down teardrop. So I am laying in that color with my pink here. And then the other bird, I'm just gonna use a different shade. Same idea, upside down teardrop. This color is super bright and I don't know um, this is kind of a fun fact um, that I don't think a lot of people know um, and that is fluorescent colors aren't able to be seen on camera so this is about as bright as it'll get to the camera eye but in person it is crazy super bright And if you try to um, scan fluorescent colors, like with a scanner, they're also really hard to see, excuse me, hard to see. And that's because um, computers and printers um, don't have that ability. So that's kind of fun to know. Hi, Tina. Glad you could join us. All right, so on the right-hand side here, I used my duller pink and so I'm going to come back through with this other pink and I'm just going to add just a few brush strokes in there just to kind of mix it up. So this duller bird is getting a little little zhuzh in there and then this bird I used the fluorescent. I'm just going to add a couple, a couple strokes of that magenta. could even add in um, a pinch of white kind of blend it out just for some some variation in color I'm a little crazy with that white there but I'll just blend it out a lot of the artwork I tend to do ends up more on the abstract side so I'm very painterly I like to leave brush strokes in and that kind of thing and then for the tail if you're working on the tail two lines and then the end is just Curved. It's got these waves at the end where the feathers are and that's how you connect the two lines. So add some pink down here. And the 
same thing over here, two lines. And then you connect it with the loopy line at the bottom. I like to create a little shadow, um, shadowing on these birds. So I'm going to go back to my small round brush and I'm just going to mix up some of this pink with like the tiniest touch of brown just to kind of get a shadowy color. So it's muddy. I'm fine with that. It doesn't need to be a pretty color. I can just kind of come through that's not dark enough maybe I'll add some blue we'll purple it up a bit here we go so I'm just gonna add a little hint of shadow at the edge of the tail there kind of highlighting where the feathers might be And also, I'm just going to add in a little on that bottom feather. And my paint is still wet, so it's kind of blending in, and that's fine. And then on the outermost feather, that would be the top feather. I'm just going to add a little pinch of my lighter pink just on the outside feather on both sides and that'll be my highlight. You can even add a little pinch of white over there. Just blend it in. There's no right or wrong. We're just adding a highlight and a shadow. So the highlight's going to go on the outside. The shadow is going to go over on the inside, which is going to be the underside of the birds. Now we're going to add some bird bellies. Um, you could go straight white for this. I think I'm going to make a cream color, so I'm just going to take some white. I don't have a lot of mixing room on here, but I'm going to add a pinch of brown. Until I make a nice cream. And then I just paint the bellies cream. And what makes using cream super easy is I can just go back through, I can grab a touch of brown and I can just mix in a little brown on the bottom of this bird here, or his belly. Whoa, what crazy. On the underside of his belly there. It just gives him a little shadow. And I can add a pinch of white up here at the top and that adds a little highlight. And you can blend and mix your colors as much as you like. I like, I like to see the brush strokes. That's just my style. But however you like is fine.
Now in my sample, um, I used like a, a brown for the beak. I'm just going to go in with light brown. If you've got an orange or a yellow, that would be cute as well. I'm just using my golden brown there. And then I use very, very little black in this painting, but I am going to add just a little dot of black for the eye. And just go real lightly. You can always add more, but once it's on there, you, it's very difficult to take it off. That's our bird. Cute, cute, cute. These birds are much friendlier to me. <laughs> Behaved much better than the bird I tried to paint earlier today, so I'm thankful for that. All right, while we've got our pink out, I'm going to add a little bow at the top. So, um, right at the center of our heart, I'm just going to add in kind of a, a wavy line where this is hanging and then a big loop on the right, a big loop on the left, we add a little knot in the middle and then a string on the right and a string on the left. And I've got two pinks here. I'm going to come back with my highlight pink and just touch in. And I'm not really even thinking too much about where I put it. Just, just little touches of highlights. It just adds some variation. I'm really liking this pink. I think I actually might even add a little heart down here. This is the heart art challenge after all, so. Right. So the last thing I want to do is just kind of add some, um, I don't know if you call them leaves, um, just some little embellishments on the vines. And so I'm going to go back to this honey brown color and where I've got honey brown vines, I'm just going to come through and add these leaf shapes here and there. Don't overthink it, just add a few. Your eye will tell you where they need to go.
once I have some of those honey gold color, I'm going to dip in the darker brown and just add a little, a little swish in each one of those. leaves just for variation. And then I'm going to come back to my dark brown and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add in some leaves with this dark brown. And then with the dark brown leaves, I'm going to come through and add just a little bit of that honey color into each of those. And by using um, just a limited color palette, it helps make the piece a little more cohesive. And that's why I do that. asked um can you watch again later yes Check. um the replay will be in guide nine so that is pretty much it and from here on out if you see you know any adjustments that need to be made go ahead and do that you know we're always our own worst critics um But that is it. I cannot wait to see what you create. Um, I hope that you will share with me. Um, also, if you're in the online paint night group, don't forget every week we have an artist spotlight. Um, so anytime you post a picture, go ahead and throw the hashtag artist spotlight on there. And you have the opportunity to um, be one of our highlighted artists. And um, please share with me at um, Online Paint Night on Facebook. I would love to see what you guys create. Um, these birds are super easy. They're super fun. You can make them in any color. You can change up the design however you want. Uh, so I cannot wait to see what you make. And again, thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Have a fantastic night, and I'll see you again. Bye-bye.